see. Ready? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Financial Accounting Program Information Session um, for BFS Supervisors. Today, um, I will be doing a lot of the talking. We also have Laurel, Laurel, oh gosh, Laura, <laughs> um, as well as Shannon from UC San Diego Extension with us here today. Um, we're going to do a quick run through of the um, PowerPoint for information. And before we do that, we'll have a opening poll and then we'll have a closing poll and then we'll go into the Q&A session. So before we get started, the first thing I'm gonna be launching this poll and take a couple of minutes to answer the four or five questions you've got here. All right, we've got a little bit over half of our attendees answering the poll. We'll give everybody about 30 more seconds to 45 more seconds to respond and then see where we are. Okay, we've tapered off pretty much the responses. Um, if you don't get a chance to answer all the questions, no worries. We'll have another poll at the end to kind of just gather general feedback. Um, so I'm gonna end the poll and I believe we should be able to see the results. Share results. So just kind of quick overview of where everybody is coming and hopefully we'll be able to answer a lot of the questions um, that you have. So. Um, a good percentage, about a third, are unfamiliar with the program, and we're hoping to address those um, information gaps. And we have had a couple already attend the information session in September. Um, there's a lot of interest in program content. Oh, let me see. Stop sharing. Oh, a lot of interest in program content and workload expectations. So we aim to provide more clarity around that. And if we don't provide enough information, um, you'll have the Q and A to ask further questions. Um, and the relevancy, and then about 50-50 for the question number four, how do you encourage your staff to apply and participate in the program? So thank you all for your feedback, and we're going to go ahead and get started with the session itself. Okay. So talking a little bit about program origin and goals. So it came about through forums like town halls, communities of practice. Um, and office hours, um, and a lot of people express the desire to learn general accounting, to build um, skills in Excel, and to better communicate with faculty and PIs. And so the program's end goal is to provide training at a basic to intermediate level um, for accounting information, establish account foundational accounting knowledge, as well as to provide um, skills for direct application to the workplace to meet um, UC San Diego financial needs. Um, previously in our fall quarter application round, we focused on fund managers, but now we're aiming to open up our application to a wider audience, hence why we're having our information session today. In terms of funding, this program is funded for a limited time um, by the Chief Financial Officer. We're looking to um, reevaluate at our one year mark and hopefully make adjustments that will um, best suit our community's needs at around the year number two. Um, in terms of funding, the cost of the um, program, or not program, course for the individuals included, as well as the required textbook. 
Um, we're able to do this through our partnership with UC San Diego Extension. So I'm gonna head it over to Shannon to share a little bit more. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, we are so excited to be partnering um, with the team at UC San Diego to provide this training. Um, Extension has been offering finance and accounting training for many, many years. And so um, it was a pleasure to learn more about what the needs were. We did a in very intensive discovery phase prior to even developing this program, um, learning about the needs of the UC San Diego community. Um, and we're able to look at the coursework we already had existing and make some tweaks to meet the needs of the community. So um, our programs, is, if you're not familiar with Extension, um, all of our programs are taught by practitioners. They're highly practical in nature. Um, we offer um, a variety of formats, and in this program, we're offering both synchronous and asynchronous learning, um, depending on which courses you choose. Um, and um, we, and you will also earn CEUs throughout. So these are transcriptable courses, and you can certainly um, receive a transcript and, and, and proof of proof of curriculum if, if needed. So um, this has been a great partnership. Um, Nathan Owens, who is here, I saw him in the participant list, is the primary contact for this program. Um, he uh, is wel welcomes questions, and if you have any questions or concerns about the program, uh, when it comes to the curriculum, the, the instructors, um, the the learning management tool we use, so on and so forth, um, he will be the person you can certainly reach out to. And we thank you for your interest in this program and hope to see many of your, not, if not you, then, then, your, then your employees in the program moving forward. So thank you. Thank you, Shannon. All right. Um, so wanting to move on to program structure and details, um, I know there was a good number of participants today who wanted to learn more about this. So for our current structure, we have one prerequisite, um, and that is determined through our assessment at the end of our application. If you pass um, with an 80% or more, you do not have to take the prerequisite course, and you can move directly into the two core courses. Otherwise, you're required to take the prerequisite course. Um, there's also one elective um, that is a part of the program, um, and we'll go through a little bit more in detail during the end poll for you to kind of view what those elective courses are. Additionally, um, we have two course types. Uh, we have a synchronous course where it is live instructor led and then asynchronous, which is um, self led, a self led course. Um, we currently don't offer live in person courses, but we will be reevaluating in the future and kind of seeing where COVID takes us. Um, additionally, in terms of course length, we have one course being around eight to nine weeks, depending on the course content. Full program completion um, with consecutive courses is about nine to 12 months. Um, if an employee does not take the course consecutively, it can take up to 24 months. Um, there is an option to take two courses per quarter. It is um, a more intense course load, but they'd be finishing in around eight to nine months. So depending on um, kind of the demands and needs as well as the availability of um, your employee's time. So, Talking about course demands specifically, um, so instruction time takes about three to four hours of work per week, um, and then an additional two to three hours of assigned work, such as homework or readings on top of that, um, is usually a part of one course. It'll take about five to seven hours of your employee's time a week to participate. Um, if your employee desires to double up on the course, um, that time also doubles to 10 to 14 hours. Um, and then more specifically for the synchronous course, the live um, instructor-led course, the um, instruction time will be on Tuesdays for about four hours once a week, something additional to consider. Um, so it may be a good um, opportunity to have conversations with employees about participation expectations, where does that coursework fall within the workday, does it, does it not, um, so just things to think about. All righty. So I'm going to hand it off to Laura to talk more about um, BFS functions. Hi, thanks. I'm Laura Virgil. Um, I know many of you work with many of you. So um, one of the things that I, so one of the reasons that we wanted to have this, um, you know, webinar or information session today is just because when we were doing the initial session, um, we only had about seven applicants from business and financial services, right? And we account for a large amount of the 
finance slash accounting functions uh, in central offices at the university. So I just wanted to make sure that we had this touch point with BFS supervisors so that you guys can encourage participation in the program and or just give you the opportunity to actually know what the program is, know what it isn't, um, and then we can either adjust accordingly or we can figure out if this is the right fit for business and financial services. So just a few more details about sort of the partnership that we have with Extension. So again, this is a the, the expectation and the hope is that you complete, um, you know, the program, which is that, you know, prerequisite if you haven't taken an accounting course before, and that's the accounting for, you know, non-accountants essentially. And then there's two core courses and then you pick the elective, right? Which is meant to supplement you and your job needs. So if you and your supervisor, right, or you and your staff get together and you're like, <laughs> you could use some basic Excel or like actually your accounting and your work is pristine, but like, maybe you need more, um, right? You need uh, a different skill set to be able to communicate with like your clients, right? Maybe we're getting a lot of pushback from PIs or faculty or something around this, you know, these new systems that we have. So that's how we're trying to develop the program. Um, something else I want to say is that this program is for UC San Diego participants only. So uh, staff that participate are going to be going through the cohorts with UC San Diego employees and staff only, right? So you're going to get that sort of, um, how do I say that, that you're going to be able to meet and engage with colleagues from across the university in a program that you wouldn't maybe never, like otherwise have that, that opportunity. So this is for UCSD participants only. Um, so you're going to meet fund managers, you're going to meet, you know, uh, DBOs, MSOs, other folks that are going through this program that are not in similar roles to you, but you can have those conversations around what those common needs are. The other thing is, is that we're working with the instructors. Um, and, and again, this is not an Oracle accounting. Okay. This is, this is basic general accounting. But what I will say is that, especially for the, um, a, the FAFNA course, which is that entry level course, we are working with the instructors the, to, to tailor it to UC San Diego practices, right? So we're talking about university fund accounting. We're talking about, you know, accrual transactions and ledgers and sub ledgers, all of those things that are relevant to our new system, if that makes sense. So um, we're gonna be going over things like financial statements and what's the general ledger trial balance report at UCSD, right? And because these are UCSD participants that are going through it, the use cases and the scenarios that come up in the courses, right, are going to be, uh, like those discussions will be around UCSD specific needs. So I just wanted to give that context as well. And then something else as we go into the poll is just, and, and you guys are welcome to just shoot me and Sophia, uh, you know, emails or whatever your thoughts are around how it's relevant. What I want you guys to think about is, is how is this relevant to, um, right, to your BFS specific role? So is this program applicable to our AP processors? What about our buyers? What about our sponsored projects team, right? I just want you to think about what are the skill sets they need and is accounting and basic financial finance knowledge a part of that? And if so, then we think that this program is for you or will be a value add. Um, so again, we're just looking for some feedback, how we can make it relevant. Um, in the initial poll, you guys said that you thought, I think more people thought that it was relevant than not. So I guess our hope is that you guys will encourage our business and financial services staff to participate in this program. Again, it's paid for for a limited amount of time. Um, we see the value. Um, so we're just looking for feedback in that front. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I wanted to talk about application information. It is opening tomorrow um, and it is open until November 19th to try to catch everybody before the Thanksgiving break begins. Um, this, we will be able to go to the website link later on if you would like to see the website itself. It definitely has a lot more information. Um, but one of the elements of the application itself is the supervisor endorsement piece. Um, because we want to make sure that supervisors are aware of the course load, um, the um, demands, as well as the benefits that could come with attending and being a part of this program, um, and understanding that we're close to the holidays to keep in mind that um, it may take applicants some time to get their supervisor endorsements in, um, and to hopefully, um, on your end, if you do have employees who are interested, to um, make some of that time to review that supervisor endorsement document. All righty. So in terms of application information and the information session, that is what we have so far. 
Um, so we're going to open it up to Q&A. Feel free to pop into the chat. Um, I put Laura's question earlier of how can this program be more relevant for you? Um, feel free to put your responses either in the Q&A or um, email Laura and I we will definitely take your feedback into consideration. And I also forgot to launch the ending poll. So let me quickly do that before um, anybody um, has any Q&A questions. So let me launch that. Um, this poll is also for questions, so it should take you a few minutes to respond. All right, we're going to give everybody about 30 more seconds. I think we've got a good portion of our participants responded, responses recorded already. All right, we've got about 75% of our responses in. So I'm gonna end polling just to be mindful of our time and to offer enough time for um, some of our questions that have popped into our Q&A. Okay. So I'm gonna share the results so we all can kind of see and hopefully it'll be able to generate a few more questions. Um, so we have, um, some supervisors um, who think that the program is pretty relevant, a few that don't believe that it's relevant. Um, and then in terms of encouragement um, for employees to participate, we do have um, some more encouragement. There are still quite a few questions about program workload expectations. If you have those, please pop that into the Q&A. Um, and then any other questions we can definitely respond to. Um, in terms of elective courses, um, when we wanted to provide um, an opportunity for you all to review what elective courses are available and to kind of gauge um, what you think is most helpful for your employees. So thank you for your feedback. Now we can just tackle some of the questions. So the first question that we have is from Davida and it says, how many seats are available for this cohort? Um, so our goal is to fill all 80 seats for every cohort um, that begins. We have 80 seats that were filled for this first round um, and we had 120 applications, give or take. And so we have 40 that are um, slated for the next cohort. That means that there are 40 seats available to start in the winter quarter, which actually begins in January of 2022. However, application periods do not align with your start date. So if you wanna apply in you know, winter, 
and say the seats are full, then we're just going to roll you over and start you in spring or summer or, you know, and so on. So we want to make sure that the applications are coming in so that we can keep those seats filled. Also, it helps us um, because this course is not always going to be linear. So for example, if we have, if we have all 120 people that say they want to be in the Excel course, does that make sense? Then we're gonna have to adjust the program accordingly, right? So um, an extension is working to do that. Shannon's working to make sure that we have that. So we anticipate that, um, and this is one of the questions that came through in the poll, is that we expect that this course is gonna take anywhere from nine to 12 months. And it doesn't mean that you'll necessarily be in a class every single quarter. So I just wanna just sort of manage expectations there. So for this cohort, we have 40 seats that are open. Um, but again, if you, you can apply now, and then you can also tell us things like, I don't wanna start in January, I wanna start in the spring. Like I need time to prepare, I need to clear my desk, I need to talk to my family, that sort of a thing. Um, and then from Kevin, our next question was, are these typically night courses or do they take place during work hours? So that's a great question. So we have different synchronous and asynchronous. What that basically means is online self-paced. You still have an instructor that you can ask questions to. You're still going through it with a cohort. Or we have the instructor-led, um, and it just happens to be virtual. That virtual instructor-led course happens on Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings during working hours. So it's a four-hour session. I believe it's from like nine to noon every Tuesday for that nine-week duration. If you choose to take an asynchronous, the online self-paced course, then that means you can do it at your, at your leisure, essentially, <laughs> during your free time. So we have the instructor-led course that happens on Tuesdays during working hours, and then homework and you know, all of that good stuff is after hours. And then you have the online self-paced course, and you can do that you know, within that time frame. You still have assignments, they're still due, but you, you figure out the schedule. So we have two options. We have another to chime in on yep. that. So just the initial course has the asynchronous or synchronous approach. Um, the core courses are strictly synchronous or I'm sorry, asynchronous, which means they're um, self-paced in the sense that they go through it at your leisure or your time frame, but it's still instructor led as Laura mentioned. And then the electives, there's um, the two, um, the leadership and teamwork course and the business communication skills are live online or, or, or synchronous. The other ones are asynchronous. And then there's a question is that, is there a certification that participants receive at the completion of the program? There is, there's a UC San Diego award of completion, which is a little bit different than a certification. A certification is like, um, I'm trying to go, you know, like, I'm now a, I'm trying to <laughs> give me an example. You know? Yeah, there, if you if you become a, C, you know, a CPA or a CFA, yeah, exactly. something like that, that would be a certification. We also issue certificates by the university uh, by extension, but this is not a, a formal certificate program, but you will receive an award of completion that is acknowledged by UC San Diego. Correct. I just want to address any of the closing polls. So program content. So we have, if you go onto our website, if you go to the financial accounting program, for each of those courses, um, what you can do is you can click into the link and there's descriptions of the course content in there. So if you have questions about the program content or what exactly each course covers. Um, and again, like we said, we're tweaking the content a bit to be a little bit more UCSD centric, if you will. Um, but you can click any of those links. It'll, it'll take you out to extension. Do not register there. Do not register. Go through the application process as it's defined on the website. Um, but you can read uh, all about the courses there and then um, see a high-level outline. Program workload and expectations. So the expectation is defined again on, on the website. So if you register for it, again, this is funded by the CFO. So the expectation is that you are completing at least the course, <laughs> um, right? And we have a completion policy listed on the website if you need more information there. Um, but again, this is this; these are tr true UC San Diego extension classes, right? This is not like a, a UCSD LMS training, you know, an hour long. Like these are actual courses, right? As if you were to register and pay for it with your own money um, to, you know, to take a course. So it is, it's a time commitment, right? Um, but you're going to leave with a skill set. These are truly uh, extension courses. 
And highly practical, I want to come back to that piece that, you know, our, our motto is learn today, apply tomorrow. So each, each session, week after week, we'll be teaching skills and knowledge that will be directly applicable into the workplace the next day. So uh, we want to make sure, I want to reiterate that piece that they, they should be bringing that knowledge into the workplace every day or every week. All right, so maybe I don't see any more questions. Um, thank you guys so much for participating. I think it gives us a better understanding of, of how, and please feel free, like I said, to email Sophia or myself or anybody with you know any feedback um, or specific questions, right? Uh, what we'll do is we'll, again, just I think just what we're asking for is that you encourage participation if you feel that it's a good fit for the staff. If you don't feel like it is, then just send us an email and let us know how come you don't think it's applicable to the job and we'll see what we can do to, to modify, tailor, add different courses, whatever that, that may look like. Um, and again, the application period opens tomorrow. Um, it's, it's like essentially a two week window. So please encourage your staff to uh, participate. We have the full program option or we have, um, you know, select a few courses. Uh, so we, we're trying to tailor it as best we can. So please just encourage your staff to participate. And speaking of tailoring, we do have one more question about can an employee pick and choose um, a certain course if they're interested in it. We do have that option available to select on our application. So if you do have an employee that is only interested in a specific course and they're able to pass the assessment, um, just to make sure that they have a baseline knowledge that is also possible. So, Perfect. Um, I wanted to address uh, another, I think it's more of a statement than a question. So under the application process, BCCFO BFS only has five seats and we already have uh, seven applications. So from our last round, what we had to do is, because like I said, our first round, the emphasis was on trying to get fund managers in the university and research administrators through the program. Um, or at least get them started in the program. And so that seat distribution is based on the number of RAs and FMs that are in essentially in departments. So that seat distribution will change um, the further we get into the program. So correct, right now we have five seats. However, I wanna caveat that if any area doesn't have the full number of applications, then what we do is we redistribute those seats. So in theory, we could go up to as many as 10 for CFO every cohort, right? And we're gonna keep this running. Um, so we do not have any CFO seats that are taken for the next cohort. So let's just assume that we have five seats plus for the next round. And again, we're doing this in January. It'll start again in March. It'll be, so we're gonna plug in BFS staff and just keep you guys on a rolling, um, you know, and then if we need to reevaluate seat distribution, we'll do that. Um, if it if we if we have thirty applications for BFS staff, um, right, then we're going to reallocate seats from places like RMP and EDI and other areas that maybe don't have as many applications to fill the need. Oh, okay. And then Iris, is it possible to pick and choose certain courses that employees interested in instead of an entire program? So we do have an option for that. What we are saying, thank you, Iris. Yeah. So I think this is actually perfect. I think you may sit in internal controls and accounting. So some of you have um, an accounting background, say, but you want to focus on a different skill set. Um, that's perfect, right? We have an assessment so that you can test out of the FAFNA course and move on to the core courses. Um, which would put you down to three classes, or we do have an option in the application where you can select from some of the electives and or the core courses. Um, and so, for example, what we would what we would hope is that you could give us a little bit of context as to why the full program maybe isn't necessary for you. Maybe you already have a skill set. Um, and then, yes, we are willing to work with staff to get them into the appropriate um, courses that they're interested in taking and leveraging. Yes. Uh, Jasmine, I was wondering if we could prioritize BFS application and make a timeline versus apply each round. So you do not have to apply. I would never want to take a seat from someone that could use it more. So we have a committee that determines who needs it more. So you don't have to you know, worry about um, sort of that prioritization of applications, right? So 
Uh, we have a committee that went through every application and they did prioritize and then it sort of slides you down in the start date. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. We have a committee that reviews that for you. Um, and then the, as far as the timeline goes, like I said, this is a little bit of finagling on extensions part to make sure that we're keeping as many of the instructor led courses full as possible. Um, so I just want to make clear that that will be managed through extension. We have a committee that will determine prioritization. Don't worry about that. And you only have to apply for one round. We don't, the expectation is not that you apply every um, application period. That's not the expectation. The expectation is that we slot you in. <laughs> Does that make sense to keep the program full? All right. Are there any other questions, last minute comments? There's another question in there. So the assessment is required to keep on file. It's a tw it's twenty questions. It's very um, how do I say this? It's it's basic accounting if you know accounting. So if you already have that background or from working in that, um, we don't make too hard of terms. But that assessment is required in order to advance you past um, the that sort of FAFNA course. Um, if you want to select other courses and then give an example of your degrees, then all of that will be taken into consideration. Um, and again, if you're not comfortable taking an assessment, like we just need to understand the why, we need substantive documentation, um, and then MBA, and MBA, got it. So the answer is, is we can work with you. We're not trying to make too hard of terms. We're also not trying to create a bunch of exceptions for certain folks. So we're trying to standardize the program as much as possible. But if you would like to apply and you feel you have a background that should, uh, you know, advance you past sort of that that prerequisite, then please just document it in your application. I think Davida had raised her hand earlier. I don't know if she has a question. Davida, are you able to unmute yourself? Let me just see. I can do that. Hold on. Allow to talk. There we okay. go. Hey, Davida. Davida, did you still have a question? I did not have a question. Awesome. Okay. Let's see if there's any other questions. All right. Well, I think with that, then if there's no other questions, and again, be sure to check out the blink page, email us if you have any questions. We just wanted to get in front of you guys so you guys can get in front of your staff and be able to answer any questions they may have. We have a, a large FAQ. Um, from our information session, other questions that folks have answered on uh, asked on campus. So be sure to check that out. And thank you so much for your time and your participation. Thank you. Thank you all.